Brilliance Audio presents Catch Me by Lisa Gardner, performed by Kirsten Potter. My name is Charlene Rosalind Carter Grant. I live in Boston, work in Boston, and in four days will probably die here. I'm 28 years old, and I don't feel like dying just yet. It started two years ago with the murder of my best friend, Randy Menke, in Providence. She was strangled in her living room. No sign of a struggle, no sign of forced entry. For a while, the Rhode Island cops thought maybe her ex had done it. I guess there had been a history of domestic assaults. Nothing she'd ever told me or our other best friend, Jackie, about. Jackie and I tried to console ourselves with that as we wept together at Randy's funeral. We hadn't known. We just hadn't known, or of course we would have done something, anything. That's what we told ourselves. Fast forward one year, January 21st, the anniversary. I'm at home with Aunt Nancy in the mountains of northern New Hampshire. Jackie's returned to her corporate life as a VP for Coca-Cola in Atlanta. Jackie doesn't want to mark the occasion of Randy's murder. Too morbid, she tells me. Later, in the summer, we'll get together and celebrate Randy's birthday. Maybe we'll hike to the top of Mount Washington, bring a bottle of single malt. We'll have a good drink, have a good cry, then sleep it off at the Lake of the Clouds AMC hut. I still call Jackie on the 21st. Can't help myself. Except she doesn't answer. Not her landline, not her work line, not her mobile. Nothing. In the morning, when she doesn't show up for work, the police finally give in to my pleas and drive by her house. No sign of a struggle, I will read later in the police report. No sign of forced entry. Just a lone female strangled to death in the middle of her home on January 21st. Two best friends, murdered exactly one year and roughly 1,000 miles apart, the locals investigated. Even the FBI gave it a whirl. They couldn't find anything definitive to link the two homicides, mostly because they couldn't find anything that was definitive. Bad luck, one of the guys actually told me. Sheer bad luck. Today is January 17th of the third year. How much bad luck do you think I'm going to have on the 21st? And if you were me? What would you do? I met Randy and Jackie when I was eight years old. After that final incident with my mother, I was sent to live with my Aunt Nancy in the wilds of New Hampshire. She came to fetch me from a hospital in upstate New York. Two relatives, two strangers, meeting for the first time. Aunt Nancy took one look at me and started to cry. I didn't know, she told me that first day. Trust me, child, I didn't know or I would have taken you years ago. I didn't cry, saw no purpose for the tears, and didn't know if I believed her anyway. If I was supposed to live with this woman, then I'd live with this woman, not like I had any place else to go. Aunt Nancy ran a B&B &B in a quaint resort town in the Mount Washington Valley, where rich Bostonians and privileged New Yorkers came to ski during the winter, hike in the summer, and leaf peep in the fall. She had one part-time helper, but mostly my aunt relied on herself to greet guests, clean rooms, set up tea, cook breakfast, provide directions, and all the other million little odd jobs that go into the hospitality trade. When I came along, I took over dusting and vacuuming. I could spend hours cleaning. I loved the scent of pine saw. I loved the feel of freshly polished wood. I loved the way I scrubbed the floor again and again, and each time it looked pretty and fresh and new. Cleaning meant controlling. Cleaning kept the shadows at bay.